David, uh, welcome Thank you. to Prague and uh, have also some questions for okay. you. Okay. Well, and uh, we all, we both work in uh, alternative uh, media scene and uh, sometimes it's, uh, our work is called some kind of uh, info war, yeah? information war. So uh, I would like to ask about uh, the condition of uh, independent or alternative media in uh, Great Britain about uh, freedom of speech. Uh, does it really exist uh, now in uh, Great Britain? Because uh, I would like a, a short, I will shortly explain uh, the, uh, the situation in our country. Uh, in fact, uh, I can say that we still have the freedom of speech uh, because uh, the people are not uh, punished. Yeah? Uh, we still can publish uh, whatever on internet, yeah. We, we don't have access on, to mainstream media, of course, but uh, just few people, I mean, in last 10 years, let's say, uh, was, uh, uh, they were blamed for uh, some kind of, uh, something like anti-Semitic uh, right. stuff and, and this, but uh, nobody was sentenced, yeah? no, nobody is in jail. Right. So, uh, what's the situation in Great Britain? Well, I think um, you can't look at Great Britain um, without looking at the, the bigger picture, not least of the internet. Um, of course, still, I mean, look at what I say and, and, and do. Um, you can still um, express yourself. Um, but uh, two things. First of all, this whole um, self-censorship and um, the, the population censoring itself that we call political correctness is becoming more and more prevalent in Britain uh, as it is in the United States and, and elsewhere, where you can um, say something, all right, you can, you can actually say it, but then you get um, the big uh, uh, antagonistic condemnation coming back, that how dare you say that um, uh, it's not politically correct. I mean, I don't care, you know, I, I don't, don't, don't affect me, I say it anyway. But a lot of people then start to self-censor themselves mm -hmm. and don't say it because they don't want that reaction. Uh, so that's, that's becoming more and more um, significant in silencing people. Uh, the other side of this, and this is this is global, is that the um, the internet giants like Google, who of course own YouTube uh, and Facebook uh, and such like, um, they are not in the end independent co uh, companies. Of course, they they answer to the same masters, and there is a a common theme now that's starting to emerge. Um, Facebook, for a start, is censoring more and more of mm -hmm. what is allowed to be posted as content and, and banning people if, if, they, if they digress these uh, ludicrous rules they have. Okay. And, and um, therefore, again, the most insidious type of censorship, um, the most um, sinister type of censorship is self-censorship. See, this, this is what happens in the mainstream media. When you're a mainstream journalist and you know that if you offer a story that it's going to get what, what, what's known in the industry as spiked, in other words, they're not going to put it in the paper and they're not going to put it on air, then what you do is you stop offering those kind of stories and you just offer those stories that you know have got a chance of getting in. That, that's yeah. self-censorship. And self-censorship is so sinister because there's no debate. There's no debate about why is it not going in, what, what, what's the problem. It's just, it's not put in anymore. And I'm seeing this more and more in terms of social media. And then um, there's YouTube, um, and this is extremely significant, where they are demonetizing uh, videos that are dealing in um, subjects that the system does not want circulated. Only yesterday, as we speak, um, all my videos on uh, YouTube on um, uh, 
Syria and ISIS and one on 9-11 were demonetized. Now, that doesn't affect uh, me so much because I produce books and I do talks, so I, I, you know, I'm not dependent on them. But a lot of um, people in the alternative media are dependent to keep going in, in a full-time way um, on money they get from advertising of YouTube videos. So this is a selective, calculated targeting of the income of people in the, in the alternative media um, to stop them functioning. And now there's this emerging uh, outrageous um, plan by YouTube to create a system whereby um, if you reach a certain level in this system as, as a you know, member of the public, you can start deleting other people's videos. Now this is, this is to avoid the in-your-face, um, the uh, authority or hierarchy of YouTube, i.e. Google, saying we're taking this down. So they, they, it's, it's, not, it's just another form of political correctness. You get the target population to silence itself. Um, and and uh, so uh, when I, I, I look at um, the way it's going, it's, it is very, very sinister and very, very obvious and very, very predictable. Um, and, and what the alternative media needs to do is build its own platforms, uh, not after, you know, all this has happened, but, but before it, the, 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 the really uh, final deletion of content is reached so that, so that uh, we have our own platforms to uh, put out videos that, that are then uh, able to be monetized for, the, um, for the, uh, the, 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 the alternative media who need that uh, income to keep going. Um, and it, it, in the United States, it's, it's even more advanced. Um, and so, um, yeah, if, if, if it's not affecting the Czech Republic now, it will if, if, if this is allowed to continue to, to expand. Because they want this they want global censorship everywhere the same. Yeah, it's also here. Yeah, <clears throat> the YouTube stuff and uh, the censorship of Facebook, yeah, it's already happening. And uh, as you uh, mentioned, uh, that uh, the uh, suppressing is uh, uh, going through uh, economy, yeah. through income. Yeah. yeah, and this is also a big problem for uh, all independent media in our country also. Yeah, so uh, we are we depend on advertising yeah. also, and uh, uh, we depend on, uh, uh, on money from uh, our readers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, how much uh, people uh, in Britain uh, understand that uh, they uh, need to support uh, independent media? Well, I mean, some do, and, and some uh, uh, take it for granted. Um, the, the real thing we're looking for is for the independent media to be um, uh, financially um, independent of everything. But this is what is now being uh, targeted. Because what we've been watching step by step is a long-term plan whereby um, these media organizations like the monster that is Google and the monster that is Facebook, they, they come along and, and like the, what, the, the guy I call the t-shirt, uh, Mark Zuckerberg uh, at Facebook, I mean the idea that Mark Zuckerberg controls Facebook is hilarious to me, um, he's just a face, a front man. Um, and so they come along, hey man, hey man, I'm one of you, you know, any great social media, hey great, and what, and, and, and Google, hey Google, yeah, I'm going to Google this, I'm going to Google that, isn't it great? And then they, they, they get so, such, as always planned, they get such a massive part of the circulation of information market, they get control of so much of the search engine traffic and where information that is um, emphasized and other stuff that's put away where no one would not normally see it unless they're looking for it. Um, and then when they reach that point and we're there, where they think they're strong enough and big enough, then the, hey man, hey man, that, that, that's gone. Now it's, we're deciding what you see and what you don't see. And, and this is what, what's unfolding now. And um, this is why we need our own, we need our own uh, platforms and our own means to monetize videos. Um, outside of the, the system, because if the, if the alternative media 
waits and waits and waits, um, then it's going to be gone. It needs to happen now. Oh yeah, <laughs> of course. Well, uh, when I uh, uh, mentioned that, that uh, nobody here is in prison for publishing, well, uh, in uh, Britain uh, there is a uh, Julian Assange. Uh, yeah. I think it's already 40 years on the uh, Ecuador yeah. embassy. Uh, have you have you met that, him? No, I've not met him. No, oh. um, but I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of different angles to this. Um, you know, I think it's great that um, information is leaked so we can see it. I think it's great what Edward Snowden has done. But um, I, I, I look at um, the WikiLeaks um, caches of, of documents and communications and email um, releases and revelations. Um, I don't think I've seen much exposing Israel, for a start, right? Yeah. The other thing about Assange is he outrageously, and on the face of it, extraordinarily, dismisses any idea that 9-11 was anything but the official story. Uh, an official story, by the way, given us by the same people, the very same people that told us there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq when they knew they weren't to justify a catastrophic war and a catastrophic um, aftermath in the Middle East. And in terms of, you know, so so I, I've got big questions about Assange. Um, and and uh, cause, cause I, I know I know from my own research over many, many years, the fundamental involvement of Israel. In, in, in world affairs, because Israel equals the Rothschilds. And, and the fact that um, WikiLeaks have not exposed anything really that, that exposed Israel is a big red flag to me. But there's another point, and that is, this is idea that, um, yes, some on the level of politicians like Clinton and, 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 and what have you, that they don't like having their emails leaked and, and what have you. But if you go deeper into the rabbit hole, um, it's not necessarily a bad thing um, for the deeper levels of this in hand that these revelations, like from Edward Snowden, about the scale of surveillance, and, and, and it's much greater than even he's pointing out, um, it's not necessarily a bad thing that it's coming out for this reason. There's an old technique, goes back centuries apparently, whereby you let people know they're being watched. But at any time, they don't know if they're being watched or if they're not. So psychologically, they start to live their lives as if they're always being watched. And, and this brings us back to what we were just talking about. It brings us back to this whole uh, um, arena of self-censorship. So suddenly, well, I'm being watched, I better not do this, I'm being watched, I better not do that, or I might be being watched, I don't know if I am or not. So you have Orwell's telescreens, like we now call smart TVs, and this is only mark one or two of smart TVs, not whether it's uh, uh, designed to go, they're designed to go into what Orwell described in terms of the telescreens, watching you and, and recording you in your own homes. It's already going on through these uh, revelations about Samsung. So it's like um, if, if you, if you, if you, you know, and all this surveillance, um, all this stuff where um, you, your, um, your, your, your surfing, your, your, your surfing history is, is recorded by the authorities. Um, if you tell people, actually through through revelations, we don't really want you to know, but but we're telling you. Um, then people start to say, well, hold on, up. Sh shall I go there? What, what if I'm being, what, 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 what will they think? And you start to self-sanctuate yourself. So well, it's not, can, not necessarily a bad thing for the authorities yeah. because, you know, people like at the level of politicians like Hillary Clinton, etc. well, it, they think it's bad because they personally are being exposed. Uh, but um, if you go deeper in the rabbit hole where those people are not on public display, they couldn't give a damn what the public think. Um, certainly not about Hillary Clinton or anyone else at the political level because they're just pawns in the game anyway. So, is it possible that these two men, I mean Julian Assange and Edward Snowden, are just uh, part of the bigger game? Uh, well, because... the, the, yeah, the question is, um, uh, they're part of the bigger game, but, but to what extent are they aware of that? 
I actually yeah, think, I, I, I actually yeah, think, you know. I think Edward Snowden, he comes across to me as a genuine man. Um, uh, looks like that. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, who, who knows in the end, but he comes across to me as a genuine man. Uh, Assange, um, I'm not sure I would trust to tell me the, the time in a room full of clocks, personally. Although so there, are, there have been some good leaks where um, we, we've seen things that we wouldn't normally see, and that's all good. But, um, you know, and I, I think the way that um, uh, the, the, uh, the leaker um, of that big cash, uh, now known as Chelsea Manning, um, I think he was, I think he, now she, was hung out to dry, um, really. Um, because um, they, they, it was clear that from what was released that the leaker was going to be uh, was going to be found, and of course it's destroyed uh, that person's life. So I, I'm I, you know I'm not delirious about the way Chelsea Manning was treated by WikiLeaks, um, but um, it's good this stuff's coming out. But there's something there's, I just think there's a backstory there uh, that's not we've not told been told yet. Okay, if you show us. Yeah, absolutely. Either way. Well, uh, now I would like to ask uh, for a few uh, topics uh, okay. which are quite uh, difficult to understand people. Yeah, well, uh, if we look uh, about on the last 10 years, uh, there was uh, many important uh, things uh, revealed uh, by you and uh, by I mean, all alternative media globally, I mean, uh, things like what is it, uh, New World Order, right. uh, what, uh, how the bank uh, works, yeah, who are the Rothschilds and other families, uh, what happened or what not happened on 9-11 and all of this. Yeah. And there are still some uh, other areas uh, which are really uh, difficult to confirm. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, but uh, what a bit about uh, you uh, speak and some other alternative media? Well, uh, there are uh, so. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask about uh, aliens or uh, okay. non human intelligent beings. Right. Yeah. There is a, a some a, a little bit, co no, it's uh, much controversial uh, information. So, uh, what could be the best proof uh, or uh, best information how to tell people that, yeah, look at this, and, and uh, when you study, for example, a uh, special case, that you will, you will be sure that uh, these beings really exist. Right. Well, we have crop circles, for example. Is there uh, something else? Well, yes. I think I think you know. Was it a reality? I, I'm a. I, 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 what I do is I um, I look at um, a range of information, ancient and modern, and I'm looking for common themes. And the common themes are extraordinary if you're prepared to look yes. for them. Um, but let's just start from the basics, um, and that is that. According to mainstream science, the electromagnetic spectrum is 0.005% of oh, what yes. exists in this universe. Visible light, which is the only frequency band that we can actually see, is a fraction, or a tiny fraction, of the 0.005%. If you, uh, which means that Humanity compared with what exists, even in this universe, never mind beyond it, um, is basically blind. Almost the entirety of existence we can't see. Then you look uh, within this sliver of frequency called visible light, and you look at what mainstream science says about the size of planet Earth compared with the universe, and they estimate that it's the equivalent, the Earth, of a billionth of a pinhead compared with the estimated size of the universe. So let's get that for a start and, 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 and say this. I think it's fair to say that there is other life um, in the universe that we would perceive as intelligent um, other than humans. And maybe, you know, 
intelligence and humans uh, in terms of the way this world was, is run might be a, might, might be, be a questionable. Potentially intelligent, I think, is, is the best way of putting it. Um, so it's clear, it's clear yeah, that... In fact, this is the official statement yeah, of the scientists. Yeah, this is, it's clear uh, to, to anyone with half a brain cell on active duty that there are other forms of life in this almost entirety of um, the universe that we can't see. Um, now, this is why when I talk about this reality being manipulated from the hidden, this is what I'm talking about. It's being manipulated from outside of this sliver of frequency that we can actually see. That, that's why it's hidden, because we can't see it. Um, and when do you then um, look through the uh, ancient cultures, uh, and, and then the insiders that I've talked to over the years um, as well, who want to get this information out. There are, there are extraordinary common things, uh, and one is that there is a malevolent force in the hidden manipulating human affairs, and, and these different cultures call this force different names. The Gnostics um, of, um, of, 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 of Egypt and, and southern France, like the Cathars, they call this force the Archons. The uh, Islamic, and actually pre-Islamic world, where it came from, call this force the Jinn. And the way the Gnostics describe the Archons and, and, and the uh, Islamic world describes the Jinn is absolutely, virtually identical. Then you've got the, um, the, the, the Chittahuri of the, of the Zulus, uh, and you've got the demons of Christianity. All these are different names for this malevolent force in the hidden. Um, uh, and so when you put the dots together, and this is why this is what has to happen, because if we've, and to a certain extent it has to happen, you do a video about this, you do a video about that, you do a video about that. You can't tell the whole story every time you do a video. Um, so you, you, you are, look at, this is a dot, this is a dot, that's a dot. But, but what I do in the books and in these, these events, these all-day events, is I connect the dots. Um, and when you do, you start to think, well, it, it's extraordinarily compelling that there is some uh, force um, not human that is manipulating human affairs. And I would say to people this, okay, yeah, you, so, you, you so, can, but, you, but, but you can comfortably mm -hmm. go back centuries, actually it was thousands of years, but you can comfortably go back centuries and chart this manipulation of human affairs where um, um, centralization of power is, is a constant theme. So, so every time you centralize power, Fewer people control more people. And now we've got this thing, globalization, and, and all these trade deals, and, 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 and the desire for a world government uh, uh, in this agenda, where, where power is getting incredibly concentrated. So fewer and fewer and fewer people are dictating to everyone else. Now, this is the point. It's where I'm going. Through this period of hundreds of years, actually thousands, um, people have been coming in to this world, being born. They have served this agenda. And they've died, and then someone else has come in, other people have come in, and they've done it for the next generation, they've done it for the next generation. And, and therefore, why would people come into this world and spend their lives manipulating it towards this ultimate goal of total global uh, control, when they ha would know they had absolutely no chance of seeing it reach fruition? It, there has to be a common a theme, a common force that spans this whole period, and that's this this hidden hand operating outside of the world of the human scene. Uh, but but people just need to to look at the dots and see how they connect, and then make their own minds up what they want to believe. Um, okay, it, so now uh, we have just many many thousands and thousands of dots, yeah, <laughs> which we can comment, but something really hard evidence. Well, it, de it, dep it, dep it depends what, what you mean by um, yeah, ha hard evidence. I mean, if you've got um, uh, uh, lots of people uh, uh, coming out and saying, I've been, uh, I've been abducted by, yeah. uh, by non-human entities, reptilian, mm -hmm. greys, whatever, um, and, 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 and they're manipulating human society, um, well, people then uh, have to choose if they accept that or not. I mean, to the person who's experienced it, 
That's hard evidence. But to the person hearing the account, they have to decide if that's hard evidence. Um, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 unless you have these entities manifesting uh, in front of everybody on the TV news, what, what, what can we call hard evidence? Um, you've got endless people who have been insiders, particularly in America, within these programs, within NASA, within the military industrial complex, who've come out and said, actually, this is what's going on. Um, so. Is that hard evidence? I think what, what people have to do, and this is what I do in my, in my work, is I look at the totality of the evidence from all the different sources, and then I, I, I look at the common themes. And, and, and it's extremely compelling, um, ancient and modern, that this world is manipulated by a, a non-human uh, force. Uh, and, and what that does is make sense of um, so much, it brings all the strands together into a, into a picture, um, into a tapestry, uh, once, you, once you take that into account. And if, you, and, and, and if that's not happening, then the world makes no sense, because it's, it's quite obvious, even if you only research in the realms of the scene, that there are networks that are um, manipulating human society. Okay, so they've been doing it for hundreds, thousands of years. Okay. What's the common theme? And, and the common theme is, is not, is, it has to be something that's not in the human society. Yes. Okay. Well, it seems also that we have to wait for more hard evidence. Yeah. Two years. Or, or look, at, look at the vast uh, number of um, supporting themes, ancient and modern, and come to the conclusion that actually oh. there's a very good chance this is happening. And I, 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 I've been researching this for 26 years, and there's no, uh, I have no doubt whatsoever that uh, this, is, this is what's yeah, happening. Yeah, of course, it's possible to uh, come to conclusion when somebody studies yeah, exactly. things. Yeah, but it takes time, and for many people it's yeah. difficult. But, but uh, what, what I, tell me what I'm finding. Mm -hmm. I'm finding that uh, more than ever before, and I travel a lot all over the world, so I'm, I'm meeting different people from different backgrounds in different countries, um, and, and there are more people now, vastly more, who are open to this, this, this big step into the fact that actually, you know, the world is not manipulated by forces we thought it was, or is not controlled by forces we thought it was. And, and more and more people are open to the fact that maybe actually, um, there is a non-human element to this, so so we people are opening their minds more than ever before to to actually what like, like we talked about a few minutes ago it, it's painfully obvious that there is obviously other life outside of human life that we call intelligent, um, and and, it, and if you have that vastness of uh, potential of other forms of life, then some of it's going to be malevolent. <laughs> I mean, look at. Look, look at the human race. Much of it is very nice. Some of it's absolutely, unbelievably malevolent. You, you, so it's bound, it's bound to be the, the, the same ba basic uh, 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 situation in the, in the unseen as it is in the tiny sliver of scene that we call the world. Okay. Uh, there is a similar situation uh, in the uh, so-called chemtrails. Right. Yeah. Many people doesn't understand, don't know if it exists and if uh, in which scale. Yeah. So now we have also many uh, people who, uh, many many insiders, yeah, who um, spoke about that. I've and got a great uh, way. I've got a great way mm -hmm. of proving that chemtrails exist. What you do is you go outside and you go like that, right? That's all you need to do, <laughs> most days, right? <laughs> and, 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 hello, um, what are those streaks coming out of that plane that don't disappear like contrails and get wider and wider and then start to come down? I mean, what, uh, well, yeah, what is it? Oh, oh, it's Superman, that's who it is, he's making them. Uh, and and, and beca again, because I travel so much, I've seen these things Everywhere, of course. And and um, I, I sat once in Arizona, and, and not not far from where I was sitting is the Luke Air Force Base, and of course Arizona being Arizona, um, the uh, the sky the, uh, when the day started was 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 beautiful blue sky, no clouds, 
And I sat there for hours watching planes taking off from the direction of Luke Air Force Base. These were small planes and crisscrossing the sky with these, these trails that never, never disappeared like contrails, condemnation trails. And, 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 and watching the, the street move together. So by mid-afternoon, I'm looking at a cloudy sky, except it wasn't cloud, it was stuff coming out of these planes. Now, again, you know, uh, uh, what is that? A mirage? There's something going on. And as you rightly say, when you put the connections together, more and more people are coming out uh, uh, from, from the inside and saying this is true. And, and uh, people are doing the analysis of the stuff in them and they're founding all this aluminium and barium oh, yes. and what have you. And I think now, I, well, I, I'm absolutely convinced nanotechnology is in there. Um, and, um, and therefore, you know, people can go, I can't see anything. What are you talking about? Or they can look at it and go, there's something going on here. And that, that's, that's all down to the, to the mentality and perception of, 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 of people. Do you want to know? Or do you want to go, no, it's not really happening, because I don't want it to be happening, so I'm going to say it's not. Yeah, but uh, when we also, in our country, asked uh, about that, uh, the official authorities, uh, I mean uh, from the like uh, Meteorology uh, Institute and something like that, they say, well, it's normal, yeah, uh, the planes are doing this, they are conrades, yeah, and now, uh, uh, well, it's uh, very difficult for uh, ordinary people to understand meteorology. Yeah, so uh, it's still so difficult to explain to people. Well, yeah, so well, it, it, it is. Um, it is, and, and and it isn't. I mean, all you can all you can do with any of these subjects is explain it in the best way you can, with with, with as much evidence as you can, and then. People just have to make of it what they will. You can't, you can't force people to see it. Um, but, you know, um, the excuses have changed. First of all, no, no, they're just contrails. And now we're getting more and more this, this idea, oh, yeah, well, we are putting something out there, but it's to do with global warming. We're just keeping the sun out. You know, so, yeah. so, so the excuses change as, as more and more people go, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. They're not contrails, are they? I mean, look at them. Oh, yeah, we need a different excuse now. Ah, okay, it's to protect us from global warming, which is not actually happening. Uh, so, uh, you know, when you see these changing excuses, then again, another reason for the alarms to go off and say, you know, what is happening here? But personally, and I'm going to go into this in the event in Prague, uh, as I do in, 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 in my latest book, um, I think uh, chemtrails are fundamentally connected to the transhumanist agenda because I think, I think they contain... A nanotechnology I have for a long time, and when you've got um, transhumanist, um, you know, promoters of Frankenstein like Google's um, Ray Kurzweil trying to sell this idea of we'll become superhuman, and where he's talking about um, all trees, all natural life, all rocks will be infused with nanotechnology, right? Well, excuse me, uh, Ray, how do you think? How, how do you think you're going to do that? Is someone going to go around the world with, with a, a backpack spraying everything with nanotechnology? Of course not. It's got to come from the sky. And, and that's, what, that's what I would say a, a major thing about chemtrails so is. You know. It seems there are uh, like similar situation. We have thousands of dots, but uh, no hard evidence. Well, see, okay. Uh, you, can, you can have... Um, you can have uh, um, uh, a situation where you have loads of dots and um, then um, the, you look at the totality of the dots and that totality of the dots equals hard evidence. In and of themselves, that each individual dot might not, but the totality of them does. Um, and so, you know, if, if, if we're going to understand something that wishes to remain hidden, that doesn't wish to be seen, that doesn't wish to be exposed, then, it, you know, if, if, you're, if, you're wait, if you're waiting for, I don't know, the government to come out and say, yeah, actually what we're doing is, you know, these chemtrails, they've got nanotechnology in, and they've got, they've got diseases in, and they've got aluminium in, and they've got barium in, it's really bad for you. 
And, and what we're doing is we're putting them out there because we, we, we're trying to destroy your immune system and we want you to breathe in nanotechnology, what they now call smart dust, neural dust, so that we can connect you to technology without you even agreeing. How about that? Yeah, okay. Uh, now it's built with the weather, right? I mean, they're not going to do that. They're not. So we have to look at the totality of the information and say, okay, look at, look at the totality. What do you think? Because um, because what, what what people that don't want to look at this stuff don't want to look at any of the stuff are doing is show me the hard evidence then right well, and, and, and I what, understand what, it. Would you want a spaceship? Yeah. Would you want a spaceship landing on the White House lawn? I mean, yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> even then they say, oh, that's not hard evidence. That's just a hoax, right? So there's some people are never going to do that. So they have to be left to get on well, with it. I right? understand, but I'm looking for a way how to explain it to other people. Yeah? <laughs> How to explain it to other people is 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 to, is to systematically dot leads to dot leads to dot, put uh, the dots together. That's why I talk for ten hours. You know, not because I love the sound of my own voice, but mm -hmm. there's so many dots to connect so that people see the totality of the evidence rather than just uh, hit, well, this is a, a video about this, a video about that. Okay. When, when it's put together, I, I can tell you from you know talking around the world on this tour <laughs> since since June that people who have come along, sometimes with a friend, oh, come on, you've got to go see this, oh, I've never heard of him, what's up? They walk out, they walk out like, whoa, it makes sense, even though, I mean, some of it's massively far out, but uh, to, 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 to normal perception. But this is why the dots need to be connected, and if you don't connect the dots, so what you've got is a series of interesting facts that are actually do not um, uh, take us into the realm of, of, of what you call hard evidence. Okay, I have the same questions about uh, something which is called free energy. Right. So, and there are uh, possibly uh, more uh, sources of uh, energy which uh, doesn't come from the uh, what is usual in the present world. Uh, I, I'm not really sure. Uh, have you met uh, the Nassim Haramein? No. No. Ah, never mind. <laughs> I know him. Oh, fine. <laughs> so you know uh, what I'm talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Because he's doing pretty interesting research, <laughs> right? Uh, well, uh, so again, uh, do, uh, what do you think uh, that? Uh, or do you know about some other people who really proved that they have something which can make some uh, revolution in? Well, I mean, energy? well, let, let's um, let's again look at the totality of the evidence, and let's start with um, Nikola Tesla. Um, Nikola Tesla was uh, a scientific genius of his day, yeah. because. He realized, and you can see this in his quotes, that um, to understand this world, you have to go into the realm of frequency, you have to go into the realm of, 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 of energy, actually it beyond the scene, beyond this visible light frequency band of the scene to humans. And um, he um, built technology um, in the early part of the 20th century that um, uh, basically could cause earthquakes. He caused tr uh, tremors um, in, uh, in America to the point where he took, he took the vast numbers of windows out. Um, he, um, he created lightning above his laboratory uh, and he, uh, he built a tower based on um, his uh, um, research that showed him that there were unseen forces of electricity and electromagnetism that could be tapped in to give us all the warmth and power we want and need without fossil fuels. Now, Nikola Tesla, who showed this, um, died uh, virtually penniless in a hotel room in New York in 1943. Why? Because he had understood how to tap into this uh, universal, uh, natural, electromagnetic, uh, electrical force and turn it into usable warmth and power. Of course, all the energy companies, uh, uh, they, they didn't want that to come out. Now, if we come further forward, there is a whole um, area of scientific research now 
uh, which I talk about in the books and, and will on Saturday, um, which um, is, um, is called the Electric Universe. And this is a whole area of research into the fact, quite absolutely spot on, that basically um, there is a level of this universe um, which is electricity and which is electromagnetism. And, um, and it's not only that, I would go further and say that it's a, it's, it's a whole uh, network of communication, electrical communication, which is why the brain works electrically, etc. Um, and, and we're interacting with, the, with this energetic electrical field. Um, they are um, uh, showing that the sun is not uh, a nuclear reactor that is creating power from the center, but is actually a processor of um, uh, electrical, electromagnetic information from the universal field. And um, uh, it, it's really great research. And what they're uncovering is that exact level of the universe that Tesla was talking about. This electrical, uh, electromagnetic level, which you can tap into and turn into usable warmth and power. Now, the people who are trying to sell us this global warming hoax as a justification of transforming global society in the image that they want, um, they are the same people. Oh, we must stop fossil fuel. They're the same people who are suppressing this technology that can give us all the warmth and power we need without um, without uh, 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 fossil fuels. But um, once the technology is in place, once you've got the technology in your home or whatever, there's no more there's no more utility bills, there's no more energy bills because that is just giving you power from the natural electrical sources all around us. Um, and therefore, that's the worst nightmare of a system that wants people to be enslaved to itself by the need to pay the bills. The more you've got to pay bills, the more you serve the system to pay the bills. The fewer bills you have, the less you have to serve the system. That is not where they want to go. So uh, it's, it's, um, it, it's, it's clear uh, and becoming clearer and clearer that all the, the energy we need is all around us to be tapped into. Uh, and this is being suppressed. Uh, by the very people that say we must stop using fossil fuels, you know, I mean, they're, 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 they're scarring the landscape with um, uh, uh, wind uh, turbines. Uh, I, I, I flew to, to Prague across the English Channel and I looked out the window and there were these kind of farms of, of, of wind turbines in, in, the, in the ocean, in the channel. Um, they, 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 they put them all over Britain, right, on the land. And they came out a few weeks ago and said, actually, um, they're not really uh, uh, effective because there's not enough wind on the land in England. Well, how about finding that out before you put them up? Um, so that, well, this nonsense is going on. We've got the European Union saying it's going to ban certain types of hairdryer and lawnmower to save the planet from global bloody warming, while all this... Um, uh, 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 energy, energy that we, we can turn into usable warmth and power without going to fossil fuels is suppressed and, 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 and that, that's what's going on. I mean, it's, uh, it's extraordinary. But once again, the key to keeping people in servitude is to hold people in this tiny band of perception created from a tiny band of possibility which is given to them by the mainstream media. And unless you go outside of the mainstream media, you'll never see what's really going on or even know there's such a thing as free energy. Same with everything else. Okay, we will see. Uh, and uh, I have uh, one more uh, question. Uh, there is a situation of this uh, child kidnapping uh, and uh, as Somebody says uh, or, or talks about some bloody rituals with uh, children. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, it's not. Uh, I, I think uh, it's not uh, much happening in our country, so people don't know about this uh, much. But uh, in uh, American or uh, Western uh, Europe, uh, I have read uh, a lot of about it. So, uh, what's the situation in uh, Britain with this? And well, also, I would like to ask about some really hard evidence and or, or about some uh, special story which everybody can uh, see and understand. Well, again, 
I can I can tell I can I can I can speak from my experience. I can speak about people that have spoken to me, um, yeah. which is hard evidence to me when different people all around the world are telling you the same thing in terms of their experience. But whether people accept that that there's, the stories are real um, depends whether they accept it to be hard evidence or not. See, this hard evidence thing is a, is a complete uh, red herring because hard evidence to one person is not hard evidence to another. Um, but uh, I remember uh, when I was in America in 1996, I met someone who um, had her actually foster children taken away or people, the children she was going to foster taken away in the most extraordinary, extreme way. Uh, and I started to, to follow this through to try to help her. And um, I ended up um, calling the federal government and asking how many children went missing in America every year. Great percentages of them never to be seen again, at least officially. They said they couldn't give me that information because they didn't compile that number. Uh, but uh, as I found out, they could tell me how many cars went missing, how many cars were stolen in America every year at the federal level. And they said to me, if you want to find out that number, you're going to have to ring every state, and, and uh, right? So there's 50 states. I, I got to about 10, and my mind was freaking blown by the number of children in those states that went missing every year, many of them never to be seen again. Some, of course, there will be an explanation, but, but many of them go missing. Then I was talking to Credo Mutwa, a uh, Zulu shaman um, in South Africa, who was telling me how many ch uh, uh, South African children were going missing, which, is an, which was another extraordinary number. Um, and, and in his area, his village, they actually had started, um, not vigilante, but, but um, they, they had created networks to, to watch the children because the children were just disappearing, right? Now, um, th th so there's that level of it where children just disappear. And then there's um, this whole area which is massive in Britain and the United States and North America in general, where social services are taking children from loving parents on the most spurious, outrageous excuses and handing them to state uh, uh, foster families. Um, and, and of course, we've also um, had this extraordinary level of exposure in Britain in recent years of the um, abuse of uh, children in children's homes, the so-called care homes in Britain, where a lot of the uh, rich and famous have been um, highlighted for being involved. I've done a lot of that exposure myself. And it, it, when, um, when you then uh, uh, talk to people who've been on the inside of mind control programs and government programs, and they will tell you that um, uh, the stealing of children is, 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 a, is an epidemic because this, this hidden hand wants children. Um, and again, you, 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 you have to connect the dots across a vast range, ancient and modern. And you go back to um, the whole concept of um, the ancients uh, sacrificing young virgins to the gods. Well, young virgins is just code for children. This, this hidden force that I'm talking about, this manipulating human society, it wants the energy of children before puberty, because we see puberty as a chemical change, but actually it's an, uh, an, a, a, an energetic change which manifests as a chemical change as well. Um, and therefore, um, they are obsessed with the energy of children before uh, puberty. This is why there is such a massive ratio of people in the upper echelons of society, as they call themselves, and paedophilia. Um, because um, what is happening uh, is that the energy of children is being drawn off uh, from the child uh, during, during uh, sexual abuse. And these entities in the hidden are feeding off that energy. And, and, and when they sacrifice children, 
um, and, and, and they create these, these, these such terror in the children. These, these children and the child's energy, prepubescent, is, is, is being uh, um, generated from the terror of the child. And, and the entities in the unseen are feeding off this energy. Uh, and that's why um, they talked about sacrifices to the gods. It, the, the child physically was being sacrificed, yes, but the real sacrifice was the energy of the child, the terror of the child, and the prepubescent energy of the child. And, and this is still going on today. In the ancient world, they could do it openly because society accepted it. Once society developed enough to say that this is outrageous, we're not having this, it went in the hidden. Um, and this is why, um, over the years, um, I've met people who've operated um, at a deep level of, of, of this hidden hand in this, these government agencies, um, who told me consistently about um, rituals that they have um, uh, experienced and observed as part of it. Um, where, the, uh, where, where, where children are sacrificed. Uh, and, and, and when you talk to them about the number of these rituals um, worldwide, uh, you start to realize where at least some, not all, of course not, but where at least some of these children that go missing actually end up. Uh, well, I know, uh, for example, about the research of uh, Kevin Annette. Uh, right, in, in Canada, yeah. Yeah, yeah in uh, He made a research about Native American people in Canada about yeah. missing and uh, kidnapping uh, these children. So, uh, is it uh, happening uh, uh, more to non-white race? I mean, uh, like you said, in Africa with black children and in uh, America with uh, Native American people. So, is it is it more uh, with uh, uh, non-white race or? No, it's, uh, th there are certain there are certain blood types um, that they uh, concentrate on, um, but people of all kinds are, are, are drawn into this. But um, some of the, two of the main blood types they want in, in, in North America they want Native Americans, but they, the, 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 the one of their real um, focuses in all this are uh, blonde haired, blue eyed uh, children. See, this whole thing about the master race in Germany and all this stuff, um, it, it, you know, it, it, it all comes in the end wow. to this because um, the different blood types, different genetic types have, have different, um, different constituents in the blood. And so there's some that they want more than others. And, and blonde haired, blue eyed. I mean, you know this these mind control projects that I've written extensively about, like MK Ultra. And that, that if you want hard evidence, that's been accepted to exist even in the mainstream. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, the scale of it, the fact it's still going on, of course, is not accepted. But there's a, 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 a an aspect of that MK Ultra mind control program where they create uh, the. Um, the Manchurian candidates and, and the people that, that, that do assassinations uh, because they're programmed to do them and otherwise wouldn't have done them. People like Sirhan Sirhan is supposed to have killed Bobby Kennedy. When you look at that story, the official story is ludicrous. Um, and uh, the, um, the uh, aspect of MK Ultra that I'm talking about is called Project Monarch. And that is almost totally focused on blonde haired blue eyed people. Blood yeah. blood, blood, blood. Uh, when, when you speak about that, I just remembered when I was a child, my grandmother told me, oh, when we, be careful when you will be in another country because uh, these kind of children are kidnapped yeah. with blonde hair. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, I, and, and, and it, it goes back a long way. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something to do um, uh, with, 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 I mean, Energy, blood, they're, they're just different expressions of the same thing. So uh, if you look at a blonde-haired, blue-eyed person um, uh, or child, um, the blood is, is a certain type because of, 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 of the genetic type. So the Satanists that in our reality um, perform the ritual, they drink the blood of the sacrifice. And the entities outside of our, um, uh, the world of the sea They're, they're feeding off the energy of the sacrifice. Because, you know, when, um, when people get into emotional states, whether it's fear or any other emotional state, 
they are giving off a particular frequency. And these can be measured. Uh, and, and, and fear and terror is a, is, is a frequency that these, these entities and the hidden want to feed off. Uh, and, uh, and therefore, um, if people can be pulled into this uh, state of terror and fear, then it's lunch, basically, in terms of energy. Uh, and of course, if you look at the world, and you look at the world wars, you look at what's happening in, in uh, uh, the Middle East now, you look at what's happening in terms of people's suffering, people's hunger, uh, 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 manufactured terrorism, uh, uh, constant anxiety, stress, fear, because of the, 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 the lifestyles that people li live. It's all generating this energetic signature that these en entities, uh, entities feed off. And it was interesting to me that I, I've been talking and writing about this for a long, 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 long time. And a few weeks ago, um, I got sent a piece of writing um, by Rudolf Steiner, of course, who's a deep esoteric thinker and uh, created the Steiner School education system, which seeks to um, awaken the child to, to its true self rather than program it with, with the state's version of everything. Oh, yeah. And um, the person who sent me it had um, translated this from the German. And of course, Steiner died in 1925. But in this, yeah. But in, in this, uh, in this writing, he was describing how entities in the unseen, malevolent entities in the unseen, um, were seeking to pull people into this quote materialistic um, uh, low vibrational state, so they could feed off them. And 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 if people wanted to stop feeding the beast, in effect. They needed to get into an emotional uh, state that was was be beyond the frequency of fear and beyond the frequency of anxiety and all these things. Um, and, and then you talk to people like uh, Credo Muchwa, the uh, Zulu shaman, who will tell you the same story about how the entities that they call the Chittahuri um, uh, are, are, are feeding off human fear. It's a constant common theme, uh, what's going on, and sacrificing is part of it. And the sacrificing of children is, is, is that that which they want most in terms of feeding off the energy of humanity. Okay, thank you. Now, now I will ask for some other story. There is a CS, uh, T series uh, Jesse Ventura conspiracy theory uh, right. about 2011-2012 mm -hmm. and uh, you have been in uh, one uh, part uh, with uh, Jesse Ventura and Alex Jones and uh, I think you remember. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and do you uh, uh, talk about uh, these uh, reptilian and lizard right. things? Yeah, and uh, you, you were uh, arguing uh, that uh, they blame to you that uh, you are distracting uh, people with these things right. from from the real political situation. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so okay. How you, how you deal? To let me start. Yeah. With, let yeah. me start with this. Let me start with this. Um, uh, first of all. Um, Alex Jones came up to me and said, look, uh, this uh, conspiracy theory show want to get you on, Jesse Ventura. I said, well, okay, yeah, fair enough. And they want to talk about the reptilians. I said, oh, fair enough. So um, I, I, I went on a tour of Australia and New Zealand um, and then and, and, and left New Zealand very ill and flew to um, Cleveland uh, where I spent the next four days in bed, very ill. And um, Jesse Ventura wanted to come up to the Cleveland event where I was talking on the Saturday to interview me. This year? No, this is um, uh, a few years ago, when, when, this, okay. when this interview happened. And I was feeling really ill, but I thought, well, okay, come. Um, and uh, at that time, Jesse Ventura, he always seems to talk about himself in the third person, which I find very strange, um, uh, said that um, he was coming up on the train from Minnesota because Jesse Ventura was never going to fly again because of the, 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 the pat downs and stuff that was uh, you know, starting at the airports. With um, I bet he has flown since. Um, anyway, uh, he turns up and um, uh, I got out of bed and um, went in there early and I was going to do this interview before speaking for 10 hours and I'm, I'm absolutely shattered, uh, uh, tired because of the illness. 
Anyway, um, I'm, I'm, I'm in this dressing room and I'm hearing Jesse Ventura in the next room. So I said to his producer, um, oh, I'll, I'll go in and have a, have a chat and say hello to Jesse, Jesse then. Oh, no, he said, don't. No, 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 Jesse doesn't like talking to people before the interview. And I, <laughs> and, and, and having, um, having been in television, uh, I, I, I started to work this one out. Um, and, uh, and then we go downstairs into this room and um, all the cameras are ready, right? And I, I said, where's Jesse? He says, oh, um, he, he doesn't like to talk to people until, until, until the cameras roll. I thought, I bet he does, but he doesn't want to talk to me, why? So I sat down and I thought, I know what's bloody coming here. Uh, and so Jesse Ventura, um, they said, action! Jesse Ventura then walks into the room like something out of Shrek um, and, and sits <laughs> down, right? <laughs> And then starts having to go at me about reptilians. Um, and I've never seen one. I said, well, so they can't exist then. Nothing you've never seen can not exist. You know, it's like crazy. And, uh, and, and it starts having to go at me. I'm probably the only person ever on, on, on uh, conspiracy theory that he's actually ever had a go at. And this is where we're coming from. And I had to be doing it for the money, right? This is where we're coming from. Jesse Ventura... Um, is one of those people, and there are vast numbers of them in the so-called alternative media, that are actually what I call mainstream light. They go so little into the alternative, they're almost imperceptible from the mainstream. Um, and therefore, um, they are in a box, they're in a perception box. Uh, and, and so anyone who is saying the sort of things that I'm saying, uh, because that cannot accept it possible to be true, and it can't be bothered to, to look at the information, um, it can only come to what two conclusions. One, the guy's freaking mad, or he's doing it for the money. And as I said to Jesse Ventura in one of these, um, one of these answers, um, I'm talking for, it was then nine hours uh, in a minute, and I explained it all to stay and watch. And he said, Nine hours? Watch for nine hours? And I thought, yeah, I, I know what you're saying that, because I, I, I guess your attention span must be about nine seconds, basically. Uh, and anyway, um, so what they do, and I, I stood up and, and they said, get on with it. This is ridiculous in the end, because uh, it was a complete setup. And here we have a uh, person who claims to be part of the alternative media mm. being part of a setup mm. with someone that has been uh, in this alternative media before he ever knew what it existed. 26 years ago I started. <laughs> so what happened then, because it's, it, it, it's, it's Time Warner, True TV. They then go away and, and, and the stuff's taken away and they edit it um, in the most extraordinarily manipulative way. And, and this guy, I mean, I live in a one bedroom apartment on the other way, not because I'm <laughs> pure, but because I like it. That's all I want. This guy lives in a freaking mansion, and and, uh, and and then has the nerve, and has the nerve to say in the voiceover that I must make two million dollars a year. Uh, evidence, zilch, pulled out of the pulled out of the ether, and it was a total discrediting job. And do you know something? Um, because Jesse Ventura re really doesn't understand the totality of what's going on, and, and, and the, 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 the massively uh, expanding number of people that are open to, to something beyond where he doesn't want to go. He didn't realize that this was, um, this was actually uh, committing uh, credibility suicide with a vast number of people. And I'll tell you the, the, I'll tell you the, um, I'll tell you the punchline of all this. A little bit later, a little bit later, he's got a radio show, but he still has. He had a guy on called Roddy Piper. Roddy Piper uh, was an American actor. He's an American actor and former wrestler, which is why he got in connection to the wrestler, former wrestler Jesse Ventura. And he's interviewing him, right? And he's interviewing him in, in, in part of this interview about um, a film called They Live. Now, They Live came out um, a considerable number of years ago now. And it was um, produced and everything to do with it was done by a guy called John Carpenter, who, mm -hmm. whose movie-making history um, uh, tells me that he has a very good idea of what's going on. And They Live 
was about a, um, a, a race of non-humans oh, that, yeah, were we know it. that were taking over, um, taking over the world by hiding behind um, human bodies, which is basically exactly what I'm saying. Yes. Um, and, and, and in the film, Roddy Piper, who plays the lead, um, finds these sunglasses that have been specially made that you can see the yeah. alien part, and so he puts the sunglasses on, and, and now he's seeing humans, but he's also seeing aliens, invariably in positions of power, like the president, who are actually not human when you can look through these glasses. Yeah. So they're talking about this with Jesse Ventura, <laughs> and Roddy Piper says, yeah, he said, um, They Live wasn't a movie, it was a documentary. And he said, and there's a guy in England called David Icke, and, and, and he's describing how it is. And Jesse Ventura, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I had a run-in with that guy. Yeah, make yourself look an idiot. Um, so, but, but this is, this is a, an interesting point in that um, the alternative media is not one thing. The alternative media is a vast spectrum from people like Ventura who are barely different from the mainstream across to people like me which question everything, everything. Um, and thus, I get as much abuse from, from great chunks of the alternative media as I get from the mainstream. Because, you know, as, as um, people like Socrates and Confucius have said, that wisdom is knowing how little we know. And thus, if you close your mind, whether it's here or here or here, and say here and no further, you are cutting yourself off from, from more that there is to know. Because the thing that we can, we can say without any uh, chance of, uh, of challenge is that whatever we know or think we know, there's always vastly more to know than we know or think we know. And so if you, if you shut yourself off and say here or no further, then, then you're, you're, you're basically putting yourself in a, in a, in a cul-de-sac where you're going nowhere. And, 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 and what's going to have to happen is that that part of the, main, of the alternative media that is currently stuck in its own, uh, um, its own concrete perception and here and no further is going to have to move because the cutting edge is moving and it's getting further and further away from that part of the alternative media that will not go out of the world of the scene. Okay, I have uh, two more uh, short questions. Okay. Uh, one is uh, really specific. Uh, probably you know about uh, some a letter from Albert Pike to uh, Cardinal Mazzini about yeah. three world wars. Right. Uh, so the question is if, uh, if the letter is real, because uh, the present time is confirming Right. Yeah, it's happening uh, by the by the letter. But uh, do you have some special information? It is real or it's fake? It was created later. Well, let's just let, no? let, let, let's just look at um, again. Let's put the dots together. Um, first of all, it's claimed that this high, very high Freemason in America, Albert mm -hmm. Mike, um, uh, who was uh, partly responsible for the creation of the Ku Klux Klan, so he was a, he was a yes. lovely man. Um, and um, he is supposed to have written this letter to Giuseppe Massini in 1871 uh, predicting these three world wars that were going to transform global society. Uh, this was revealed in the 1950s by a, um, a man called Carr, uh, who was a former uh, um, Canadian naval intelligence agent. Uh, uh, that he, he worked in that field. So what the letter described about World War I um, was accurate. Mm -hmm. What it described about World War II was accurate. However, this um, was revealed in the 1950s, so what was said about World War I and World War II is irrelevant. But World War III had not happened, and it was described in this letter. And it was described uh, 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 um, how um, it would come out of the Middle East, It would be um, uh, triggered by um, basically a clash between what he called political Zionism and the, the Muslim world. And that vortex would pull in other nations into this big war. He also said that um, in the run-up to this Third World War, they, i.e. that which he represented, would, quote, unleash the nihilists. And if you look at the definition of nihilism, 
It is absolutely describing ISIS and these Islamic terrorists that, that are there now. Um, so uh, you're right. Um, the um, What uh, Pike described, or is said to have described, about the Third World War, which is the only thing relevant about the letter, um, is, is appears to be happening. And I've been writing and saying now, since way back, that the plan in this Third World War is to pitch the West against Russia and China. When I started saying it, there was no evidence in the public arena that there was any such thing happening. But now look at it. Um, you've got, a few months ago, you've got the Pentagon announcing that the biggest threat to world peace was Russia, the second biggest threat was China. Oh, yeah. you, we hear it from our te television every day. You've got... You've got um, <clears throat> Russia being systematically demonized. I mean, you know, there's a hack into the Democratic uh, um, National Convention emails to expose that they were stitching up uh, uh, Sanders on behalf of Clinton. And it's the Russians, you know. I mean, where are we going? I burnt the toast, it's the Russians. I've got a flat, it's the Russians. Everything, it's, it's, it's the Russians. It's so blatant and pathetic. Um, and then you've got, of course, what's happening in Ukraine, which was a, a, a U.S. instigated coup called the People's Revolution. Um, and then you look at China. China is, is like Russia, um, supporting Assad, uh, more in the background, although more vocal about it in recent, recent days. Uh, and, and you've got um, Russia in there um, uh, with, with, with warplanes um, supporting Assad. You've got America and, and Turkey and... Um, and, and France and Britain, so, so that area within Syria is a powder keg um, waiting to go off and you can see that what's happened in recent days um, with the, um, the Russians again being blamed for, or the Russian stroke Assad being blamed for um, bombing a UN uh, aid convoy with no evidence whatsoever. In fact, the UN, the UN went with the US explanation, it was Assad or the Russians, and then started backing off because it couldn't support the evidence. Uh, you have um, the uh, attack on the Syrian troops against international law by the Americans, and then they say, well, it was an accident. Um, and, uh, and you having this, this, this diplomatic situation now where the Americans have said, uh, A, um, we're not having any more diplomatic uh, uh, relationships over Syria with Russia. You've got this Ash Carter fella um, mm. in uh, the uh, Defense Secretary in America um, saying that they, 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 they have to consider rewriting the nuclear playbook in relation to what's happening with, 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 uh, with, with Russia. And you've got this State Department spokesman, John Kirby, the latest dummy to be wheeled out to, to, to talk nonsense uh, to the world's press, um, who, who, who um, was saying that if, 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 if Russia stays there, Russians will be going home in body bags. They, they could be uh, uh, terrorist attacks in Russian cities and so on. Um, and and that, that was not a, a prediction. That was clearly a threat, and that's how the Russians took it. So you're seeing this situation emerging in the very area of the world that Pike talked about. So, uh, I mean, you know, uh, if, if people want to dismiss it, oh, you know, it was, it was all a hoax, it didn't really happen, that letter. Well, whoever, whoever said it did happen was some prophet. That's all you can say when you look at world events. And of course, in the South China Sea, uh, and, and now in, in North Korea and South Korea, you've got the... Um, the uh, conflict between uh, a verbal at the moment between America and China over uh, mm -hmm. who owns what in the South China Sea. You've got a similar conflict going on between Japan and China in, uh, over what's what's in the uh, East China Sea. And this week, uh, the Americans have announced that they um, are planning to put in a missile defense system into uh, into South uh, Korea, mm -hmm. which of course, what well, people might say, um, well, it's just a defense system, but hold on. Once you've got a defense system from incoming missiles, you have the potential for a first strike without worrying about the return fire. Um, so so actually- the it's same situation in East Europe. Yeah, exactly that, uh, with what they, they, they were trying to do in Poland, etc. 
So, um, uh, and, and now uh, China have come out and said, uh, look, South, South Korea and America are going to pay dearly if they, if they start messing with us over, in, in terms of, of what's happening in North Korea. So you could, and, and then, of course, in, in even more recent times, you've got this conflict breaking out between India and Pakistan. Mm-hmm. And all, it's, it, it's all orchestrated. Mm-hmm. Um, and and um, so when you, uh, when you look at the, the situation with the American presidency, um, uh, well, both of them would be front people for this. Um, whatever the, some of the alternative media claims about Trump, they're going to be very embarrassed if he gets in. Um, but if Clinton gets in, her first priority, as you can see from many of her speeches in the election campaign, castigating Putin and Russia, she's, she, her first priority is going, to, is going to be quickening the process to this Third World War. Um, and so, uh, like I say, if the Pike letter was, a, was, a, was made up, whoever made it up was a serious prophet, because it seems to be unfolding before our eyes. Well, there is a lot of uh, secrets in Bible, which are waiting for... <laughs> Research. Uh, do you have uh, some uh, special interest about uh, some topic which you are researching now, or which you would like to research? Is, is there a special area where you would like to know more? Well, <laughs> because uh, it's a lot, a lot of things. Well, uh, I mean, uh, what 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 I do is is connect dots. Therefore, the number of topics that I research is enormous. Oh, yes. but, 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 but one, one, one that people really need to know about is the transhumanist agenda. I go into this in, in uh, Phantom Self, uh, which is just coming out in Czech, and I, I'll go into it on Saturday in some detail. Um, and that's the plan, to get technology inside people, not least in the brain, and not least nanotechnology that we talked about earlier, smart dust and stuff. Um, which um, will uh, connect the human conscious mind and the human uh, processes of the brain to technology, to what Kurzweil calls the cloud. And Kurzweil is openly talking about the fact that, that from 2030 onwards, and we're in 2016 now, um, humans will be connected to the cloud. And that as time goes on, the cloud will do more and more of the thinking, i.e. artificial intelligence, will do more and more of the thinking of humans until there's there's no human left as we know it. And and the reason that they are being so open about it is they're selling it on the idea that it will make us superhuman. Um, What it will make us is subhuman. It will make us nothing more than a computer terminal on their um, technologically created cloud stroke internet and um, people need to understand that because all this stuff with smart technology uh, getting people addicted to it moving them on to things that they have on their on their bodies like wearables they call them uh, your smart watches and your google glass and all this stuff um, and now they're moving to the next stage um, all steps carefully planned which they're calling implantables and i i, I read an article in late 2015 in Forbes magazine in America, where they were predicting that in three, four years, wearables will be as common as the other stuff. Um, And that's how they're getting technology inside us. Uh, Why this process, you hold it, you get addicted to it. Okay, you wear it, now we're on the body. Mm. Now we go to implantables, now we're in the body. Done. And it's so important to get this out to as many people as possible because of the speed that this is happening. Uh, and the way that people are becoming so addicted to technology that they will um, queue in the middle of the night to be one of the first to get a piece of technology that is only there to um, to enslave their minds, uh, ultimately. And so when I talked earlier about uh, Facebook, Google, YouTube, uh, all being part of this, you can add Apple as well as Microsoft, you can add Apple to that um, to that number because they are fundamentally involved in this as well. Okay. Well, I would have a lot of other questions, yeah. but we will hear more on Saturday. Okay. In your books. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thank you very yeah. much. No problem. It's been a pleasure. Thanks.